things are like so fast paced i'm pretty shook right now by what just happened i'm stress eating i'm so pissed off i'm gonna cry hey guys my name is marley hope you guys are doing well i just finished filming my october wrap up and now we are going to get into my november reads as you can see from the title i am going to be filming a reading vlog for one of my most highly anticipated reads of the year and that of course is as good as dead by holly jackson the third and final book in the good girl's guide to murder trilogy this is going to be a spoiler filled review and vlog so keep that in mind as you watch this has been out for like over a month so i figure it's given people time to read it and i'm so excited to get to it i did hear a couple negative-ish things and that sort of caused me to be very nervous but then i saw a really like great raving review from olivia at olivia reads a latte so i trust her and my expectations kind of went back up my experience with this series is that i read the first book in one night and i remember wishing that i had vlogged that experience because i just enjoyed it so much and then i did vlog when i read the second book earlier this year which i'll link somewhere so now i'm going to dedicate a whole vlog to this one if you are not aware this series follows our main character pip who is very interested in being a detective and loves true crime and all that in the first book she solves this one murder mystery case and then gets like very famous from it in the second one she takes on a different sort of mystery and actually has like a murder mystery podcast and in this book i honestly have no idea what's going to happen Okay, I just read the little flap. It does sound like this is going to be a different sort of mystery again, which each book seems to be. The first one was a murder mystery, the second one was a missing person, and this one it seems like it's more personally involving Pip. It seems like someone is stalking her and threatening her, and she has to figure out who that is before she's the one that ends up dead. So really excited. I hope it will be as good as the other ones. Yeah, so let's get into it. So I got 50 pages in and quite a bit is happening. Things are like so fast paced in this book. I can definitely see why this book has been said to be darker than the others. It's kind of like things from each book just keep piling up and piling up for each of the new books, which is really neat that even though we get new mysteries each book, there's still some like conflict that is carrying on. For example, Max Hastings, who is the rapist in the town is currently suing pip for defamation because she shared the clip of him i think admitting that he is a rapist but yet he was proven innocent in court so he's currently able to sue her for defamation that you know that's not true and it's ruined uh his reputation and things like that but we know that it is true so that is like a really upsetting storyline going on pip had like this meeting to try and come to some sort of solution so it didn't go to trial but pip of course knows that he's guilty so she's not giving in and taking a little uh deal she wants to like take him all the way to court and actually get justice so we are dealing with that then pip is currently addicted to drugs apparently which is a new thing and it's so upsetting because she has been through so much and now she's like addicted to xanax so we have that that we're dealing with and she is of course hiding it from everyone and then another kind of continuation is that the villain character the killer from the last book is still on the loose which i forgot about i read the second one really quick so i kind of forget but i forgot that he was like on the loose still so it's a potential thing that like he could come back for revenge or something like that and there is someone that is sending pip anonymous messages saying who's gonna look for you if you go missing kind of thing and so maybe it's him maybe it's someone else that she has pissed off throughout the series that i think will be kind of like the main mystery although that man would probably be like the most obvious one so it's probably not him but anyways then we do have some like kind of nice moments like ravi which is her boyfriend her love interest is just absolutely stunning in every single book and every single scene he's in i just love the dynamic of pip being like the very serious one solving crimes being kind of like 
dark and then Ravi is just like so such a bright light and is always making jokes and like the only one to really make her laugh it's just so cute and I'm just so grateful for those moments because without that I feel like it would be just such a dark series and then Pip is also like was just hanging out with all of her friends that she's made throughout the series people that she's helped and at least there is that sort of like warm heartedness in this book as well but there's a lot of dark stuff happening too. The only other thing to mention is that Pip is now going to take on actually a new mystery as well which I'm a little shocked. I feel like she was wanting to get away from that like in the last book but I guess she's still just diving right back in doing another season of her true crime podcast and she's going away to college soon and she wants to take on this mystery that takes place I think close to where she's going to college so I'm interested to see if we're actually going to see her go to college or if this is just like the summer leading up to her starting I'm not quite clear on that or what the timeline's going to be but basically there's a lot going on in the first 50 pages I'm already sucked in as I always am with these books I just can't wait to see how Holly Jackson wraps it all up and makes all of the previous mysteries mix in with this book there's a lot of potential for some crazy dark things to happen so yeah i'm gonna get back to reading but i feel like it's uh, off to a good start pip is literally the am i the drama i'm not the drama tiktok audio honestly this is her list of enemies like so long <laughs> okay now i am 100 pages in and we are really getting into the stalker storyline so basically pip has been noticing some weird things going on just small things that she just kind of didn't really focus on at first like getting these anonymous messages to her email saying who's gonna look for you when you disappear and then there are little pigeons that are showing up dead on her driveway in the same spot. Things that can be like explained away, like maybe a cat killed them or whatever. And then now there's the little stick figures on the driveway and they keep getting closer and closer to the house each day that someone is clearly drawing, acting like they are coming for Pip. There also was like a sign on her running path that said dead girl walking there's just like a bunch of kind of little things like that so she decides to go to the police even though they've never believed her in the past she goes to them to say i think someone's stalking me whatever of course the stupid police officer still does not believe her after now t her being right about two cases and because of that i really am like being suspicious of this man because how can you not believe this girl after her being right about things like so many times now so i'm definitely suspicious of that man so now she's like convinced she has a stalker and was making that enemies list that i showed you and it's like so many characters and it's a thing where like she's considering so many different people that i'm like i don't even know who to really think that it is the only thing is there are a couple things i picked up on that pip hasn't one of them is that her brother mentioned seeing like a pervert watching their house so obviously there's something going on with that the brother has seen them or something and that makes me think it's a man but then there was another person that said she was surprised to see pip out because she thought she had just seen her get home so it makes me think it could be a girl who looks like pip and is like the same age that was hanging around her house stalking so that's what i'm leaning more towards that it must be like a girl or it's multiple people working together but yeah i'm invested anyways they're they're finding out some like other things like they just made a connection with what's happening to pip with a like past serial killer from years ago so now it seems like there's some external factors i don't know i don't really know but a cool mystery is being developed yet again in this story and I just want to know. I just want to know. Good morning. It's the next day. I just read a little bit more of the book before I'm gonna log in and start work, but I'm 150 pages in now. As you saw last night, I was reading and I was actually getting pretty creeped out. It's been a while since a book made me feel pretty scared. I think it's because my boyfriend went to bed before me. Just having him like not in the room with me or anything, like I felt so scared. I was like, is someone in here? <laughs> Anyways, um, and then I read a bit now. So 
things are heating up. So yeah, they found that connection to that old serial killer who ironically, his last murder is the same date that Andy Bell was killed from the first book's mystery. So we're getting a lot of connections to the first book actually, which is neat to know that like Holly Jackson might have like had this all planned from the beginning. But basically it seems like the guy who got arrested for those murders is innocent. They talked to his mom and she had like some evidence to kind of show that he was probably innocent, which means that that killer is still out. The DT killer they call him, the duct tape killer. So if he's still out, that's probably the person that is stalking Pip because he's using the same kind of tactics. So that's really scary. And of course it's seeming like it's one of these people in the town. The main suspects are definitely the police officers and then Andy Bell's dad, as I might've said last night, I the weapons and things that were used with those murders were from the company so it's clearly someone who probably worked there but again like they're really making that obvious right now when we're not that far in so there's got to be some sort of twist to it but loving this so far I don't know why I ever saw those kind of like negative reviews because I still think it's just as good as the other two so far can't wait to be done work today can't wait to get back into this book I wouldn't be shocked if I just finish it tonight because yeah it's definitely living up to my hope so far i'm just so worried about my girl pip though like she is so scarred from seeing someone murdered in front of her in the last book and she just keeps thinking she has blood on her hands when it's actually just sweat and i'm just like oh yeah she's probably gonna almost die again shook right now by what just happened i'm 200 pages in at chapter 25 this is what we have here darkness so basically pip was getting super close to figure out who the dt killer was and she found out that andy was actually involved andy bell the girl who died back you know in the first one or whatever she hacked into andy's old like email that she had found out that andy knew who the dt killer was and that explained a lot of andy's actions that she did in the first book of why she was sleeping with a teacher to try and like advance and why she was selling drugs so she could get money to escape the town and to escape dt because she knew him whom so immediately i thought it was her dad like i thought it made it very obvious that it was her father but then pip didn't think so so i'm like okay i trust pip and pip's thinking it's daniel da silva because he also like knew the bell family and then he fits all these other clues that she's found after doing like this other investigating stuff whatever so now she also did this little trick to find out the guy's email when he does like a prank call to her not a prank call but like when he calls her from no caller id she did this trick to see his number so she does that and then she immediately like calls his number back to like catch him like catch his real voice see what his answering machine is whatever to see who he is and literally as she's calling she hears the ringing in like beside her or like right behind her before she can turn around this person like attacks her suffocates her or knocks her out or whatever so she's literally getting kidnapped by the killer and i'm only halfway through the book or less than halfway and i'm like shocked that this is happening like this early in the book very curious to see if we are like gonna find out in this literal next chapter next page and if we're gonna have like the climactic like villain sharing their whole story to the hero and then she has to escape if we're gonna have that happen like so early or i don't know i don't know what's gonna happen but this is pretty crazy you know when you're reading and then your eyes like skip down to the bottom page and you like spoil yourself so that just happened so the person who took her was jason bell so andy's dad which is what i was just saying like i thought he was the obvious suspect when andy was saying she like knew it was him and all this it, like makes sense that it was her dad with what she was saying so i'm kind of like not shocked like i'm kind of shocked pip didn't think this but i'm also wondering if like this is still a trick and like he's not actually the dt killer he's just like kidnapping her for some other reason i don't know so it's 
it's later in the night, obviously. I am now over 300 pages in and things have taken a turn. If you read this, you know it's really taken a turn. So you guys saw I thoroughly enjoyed the first half of the book, was loving it, had the same sort of structure as the other books. And then we found out who the killer was halfway through, as I said, it was Jason Bell. He is the DT killer. So he kidnaps Pip, ties her all up, literally duct tapes her whole freaking face, confesses to the other murders, says how he's gonna kill her, stuff like that. He leaves for a little bit, and of course we have like the epic moment of Pip managing to escape, managing to get the tape off of herself, getting out of the building, all this stuff. He returns as she's escaping, and I'm like, girl, just run, get out of there, like find someone, anyone, call the police, there's tons of evidence there, like the duct tape that has your DNA on it, like your DNA in his trunk of his car like there's a lot of evidence for if you go to the police but our girl <laughs> goes back and decides she needs to break the cycle and so she kills this man okay even then i'm like okay that's warranted it's self-defense again she can call the police she can say how he kidnapped her and was gonna kill her and so she had to kill him but she starts freaking out, not doing that, saying how she can't trust the police, which I understand why she thinks that, but I'm like, there's legit evidence here. Like, I think they would believe her, but she's like, no, she's freaking out. She's like, I have to call Ravi. I'm like, girl, you're looking so guilty. Like, just call the police, hello. Like, she's normally so smart. Like, why is she being so dumb? And then she calls Ravi like on Jason Bell's burner phone. And she's like, I'm gonna destroy this. But I'm like, girl, that's like more evidence of his guilt that you're just gonna destroy. Like, what are you doing? And anyway, she gets Ravi to come help her and explains how like they can't go to the police. So they have to like cover up this murder. And so it becomes now a how to get away with murder situation of them coming up with this big epic plan for the second half of the book of framing someone else. And of course they decide to frame the town rapist, Max. So I get why Holly Jackson's doing this. She's like getting two villains out of the way at once, killing two birds with one stone, if you will, which is like a reference they make in the book. But I was getting so much anxiety reading that. I'm like, I don't like this. Like, I wish they just would have went to the police and I definitely think they could have like found a way to make it seem like it was self-defense. I think that would have been easier to try and skew rather than literally trying to frame a whole other person. So at first I was like, okay, now I see why people weren't loving this why some people didn't like it as much as the others because it's totally flipping like the formula it's becoming a whole different thing but as i kept reading like i have come to like it more i guess like i guess it does make it different from the other books and we're getting to see how pip is smart in regards to murder in like a different way it does make sense if she can solve these big murder cases that like should be able to like get away with one I guess, but like, it's just a very stressful situation now of them doing all these different things to frame him. And it's getting to be where it's like, is this even realistic anymore? Not really, because sure, they're doing a lot of smart moves, but it's like, I don't know if this would actually work. Having a little bit of more mixed feelings now, still liking it. Like I still just love, you know, the writing and how fast paced it is and how interesting and like, I love Pip still, but I'm definitely questioning her. <laughs> and I'm like, Ravi, like, why are you letting her do this? Like, he should have called the police and like been sensical, but anyways. Looks like I'm not gonna be able to finish it tonight. I wanna go to bed. So the vlog continues on to a third day. Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, I'm warm. This book, this book is crazy. This, this is just, yeah. I'm at about 400 pages now, so not much left. Sorry, I'm like shook by this. Okay, so basically Pip and Robbie did this whole big plan, right, to frame Max. They snuck into his house to get clothes for them to wear at the crime scene. They knocked him out so that he would, you know, not be doing anything. They grabbed some of his hair to put on the body and on the crime scene they literally cleaned everything they did all this stuff they lit a fire to like burn the body burn the building burn the car they just did the most like they were covering all their bases blah 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 
that was sort of interesting to see what they were doing. I feel like it, the book was like showing us how we could get away with a murder. <laughs> so yeah, they just did like the most that they could do. They even brought some of their friends in to help, but like didn't tell them details, but like still got their help kind of thing. So Pip has been like waiting to see reports of it and like to see if they got away with it. If one of the main things they did was like freeze his body for a few hours and then let it warm up again to make it seem like the time of death was a bit later. And during that time, they made sure they were seen on camera and all that stuff. So they had an alibi. Anyways, just now Pip got called in to talk to the police and she was like, oh, it's fine. Like they just wanna ask me a few things. She's gonna report on this crime for her podcast because that's something Pip would normally do if she wasn't the killer, right? She would look into the murder. So she's pretending that she just wants to look into the murder and report on it. And so she's talking to the police, acting all normal. He starts asking her stuff about headphones, being like, oh, I kinda wanna get some for like my nephew, like what would you recommend? Like what do you have? What do you use? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, crap. She left her headphones somewhere. Like there's something tying her to the case. And yep, yeah. yep. Her headphones were found in Jason Bell's house. So that's something that Pip could not have foreseen because she didn't know that he took them. I'm guessing when he kidnapped her, he took them and she didn't realize. She thought her brother had just stolen them to borrow. So now I'm like, crap, this is exciting again because it's like, is she gonna get away with this or are they gonna now be able to pin her to the case? I'm just really stressed about it. I'm stress eating, I'm so pissed off, I'm so pissed off. Pip should have done what I said, which was call the police from the beginning, say it was self-defense. Literally, there's so much proof that he really was a DT killer and he could have went to jail. And what about the innocent man? What about the innocent man that went to jail instead of Jason for the DT murders? Pip was just gonna let him stay there? I see, I see why people would be upset. I'm really upset. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. I'm gonna cry, I can't believe it's over. So I finished the book moments ago. Yeah, obviously you guys watched this whole video, you saw that this is a crazy roller coaster of emotions that I've been on while reading this book. So basically the issues got solved because Ravi went to the police and said that he was the one who borrowed Pip's headphones and he had visited the Bell's house to talk about something and had left them there. And that basically like solved everything. Then they didn't focus on Pip anymore and they just focused on all the evidence that had been planted against Max and he gets arrested and yeah, so it works out, but then the cop, Hawkins or whatever, says this little comment to Pip, insinuating that he knows it was really her. And he really does suspect that it's her, but he just has to go with the evidence. And so Pip is still like freaking out about it. She ends up breaking up with Ravi. She pulls a new moon. She pulls a Edward a new moon and says that she cannot have contact with anyone in her life. So Ravi, her friends, her family, until the actual trial takes place and Max actually gets sentenced to go to jail because just in case he actually gets off and does not get proven guilty, then Pip will probably be the next next suspect, so she wants to protect everyone around her. But I'm like, girl, that's not even gonna protect them. Like, you just not talking to them anymore? Like, that doesn't change that you talk to them then. And now you're just kind of like, wasting time i don't know i guess it kind of made sense that ravi could then say like she forced him to lie to the police but i was just kind of like this seems kind of dumb and i i kept having those thoughts throughout the book that like certain things are kind of dumb or i was obviously disagreeing with pip as we have seen so yeah she just goes off and is like living a miserable little life thank god the guy who was wrongly accused of the dt murders still got out at least they wrapped that up there was still enough evidence that jason bell was the dt killer so that man did get out of jail thank god and then the very end they say how long it's been. It's been like over a year that Pip hasn't been speaking with everyone and that the trial's been going on. And we see that the trial is finally finished and Max does go to jail. And then you just see a little screenshot of Ravi texting Pip and saying, hey Sarge, do you remember me? Or something like that. 
and it did bring tears to my eyes because I love that man, Ravi, and I love their relationship. And so I'm gonna still give it five stars, even though this is definitely my least favorite of the three and it just went to some crazy places and some places that pissed me off. I still just think it's such a good book that I couldn't stop reading. I had just so many emotions while reading. It's definitely pretty predictable and I would say that it's a bit long and repetitive in some parts as well, but I still just like reading this series so much. So this is the result. I still give it five stars, but I definitely see how there would be criticism for it because yeah, I agree with those things, but I still just felt so many things that it had to be five. As much as it's interesting that this went to such a dark place, especially with Pip's character, a part of me will always wish that it didn't go that way and that Pip could have had like a better life, but uh, that's not the way it went and it makes sense like this is this is dealing with murder and that's like some real dark stuff so so i think that's gonna be the end of this vlog hopefully if you guys watched it you enjoyed it if you are here i assume you've already read it so let me know your thoughts were you as angry as i was or did you kind of agree with what pip did I don't know, just let me know your thoughts and make sure to subscribe for more bookish videos, including reading vlogs. I'm gonna do another vlog like this soon with a new release and it'll be a spoiler vlog again. I will see you guys then. Bye.